Alrighty then. I'm gonna break it down to two types of parts of the review of this year's E3. First, I'm gonna start off with the game, the aspect of the games itself. The games itself. We're gonna do an E3 2015 review right now. Okay? That's what we're gonna do. So, alright. What I'm going to tell you, we're going to start the games first. And when it comes down to the games, Sony won. And like I said, this is not me being biased. It's not being a, being a fanboy because I am, I'm getting all the systems. I'm getting the Xbox One to model. But it's not going to be for me, though. It's not going to be for me. Um... It's, it's a gift. But anyway, like I said, not a fanboy. This is, this is totally what's been shown. When it comes down to the game, Sony won. Sony PlayStation won. Uh, they showed right off the gate The Last Guardian. They showed amazing graphics, all that good stuff. Sony was pretty fl flashy in their conference. I'm not even going to lie. And we saw this dog bird. That was in the game. And I'm just like, whoa, what the heck is this, man? This is some, this is some scary stuff, man. I, I'm seeing a dog that can fly with bird feet. Like, wh what kind of stuff is that? But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, That, oh yeah, that game with the chick with the bow and arrow. Horizon, whatever that is. That looks beautiful. I want that game. That looks beautiful. I like that. I like that a lot. They showed what else? Destiny DLC. I don't care. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which they are, Sony is funding. I don't care about Call of Duty. I have not played Call of Duty since Black Ops 1 and Modern Warfare 2. So I don't care for Call of Duty. I mean, Black Ops 3 looked like freaking Titanfall um, Deluxe Edition. Okay? It, it, it's pretty much Titanfall. You pretty much did what... Oh, uh, never mind. I'm sick and tired of Assassin's Creed. Like, I, I thought they came out with a game like a week ago. God damn, man. I thought they came out with a game about a week ago. I'm talking about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Assassin's Creed this, Assassin's Creed that. Ubisoft, stop with the Assassin's Creed. And I'm not a fan of Assassin's Creed. I'm like, man, y'all are milking that franchise. But, um, like, I mean, it was still good, nonetheless. Um, they showed Street Fighter V, which I'm going to talk about Street Fighter V and how I think about the game in a different video. Uh, show Cammy and Birdie. Pretty good. I don't like how Birdie is in design, but, you know, I'm just glad to see him back in the game. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Everybody wanted this game. And I'm sick. And I'm glad that it's, it came to fruition because I am sick and tired of people whining and complaining about this game. And that is Final Fantasy VII. The most overrated Final Fantasy, set, Final Fantasy game ever. Okay, Cloud is not that special to me. Like, he's not. It's a good game. Final Fantasy VII is a good game, don't get me wrong, but it's overrated, man. There's other Final Fantasy games that I like better than VII. This is overrated. The only games I had never played, I, I kind of skipped through, was Final Fantasy II, Final Fantasy III, Final Fantasy XI, and Final Fantasy XIV. And Final Fantasy 13 too, because I ain't like 13 series at all. And I ain't like the MMO stuff. But yeah, those are the only Final Fantasy games I didn't play. I played all the other ones. But yeah, this Final Fantasy, because Cloud is like, I guess, the flagship, the the poster boy of Final Fantasy. And, you know, you know, and Square Enix decided, hey, let's make a Final Fantasy VII uh, remake. Because they trolled us last year. <laughs> they trolled us last year. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, I'm happy that it got it. 
and I'm glad that they got it and it's in the works. Now people will shut up about it. But uh, what else? I I know I'm forgetting a lot of games. I know I'm forgetting a lot of games. Uh, it was so many. I can't even remember. I'm just I'm just thinking at the top of my head right now. Um, the indie games were cool. Um, <laughs> I had to give off points off of because they they showed Uncharted Four last. That that soft reset button to that scene that they did, and you know it it, it, it was crazy though. It was funny how they did it though. Like nothing happened. Like reboot. Like the minute like Will Smith with that uh that thing when it flashes, and you don't remember anything that that happened. It it was like that. That's what they did with Uncharted Four on that scene. But yeah, the Charter 4 looks good. But it better looks like that when I get my hands on it. They better not pull a Watch Dogs on me. Naughty Dog, I'm talking to you. But on Charter 4 looks really beautiful. It looks really good. What else? Uh, I'm forgetting a lot of stuff, I know. I am forgetting a lot of stuff. What is it? Mirror's Edge Catalyst? That's coming out. Most of the stuff will be multi-platform, like Final Fantasy VII will also be on the Xbox One. Um, and yes, yesterday, I was so hyped that Shenmue 3 is in the works and found out later, thanks to a comment, whoever you are, that Sony is funding the project of Shenmue 3. And if you donated on the Kickstarter, you would got updates of the perks that they that they working on and that you were gonna get so yeah I'm really happy about that I'm, I'm glad I should have did a reaction video of everything I saw at E3 but I missed half of it I had to scan through Microsoft's and Nintendo's which I'm gonna get the uh, Nintendo's next but um Shamu 3 that was the highlight of the night for me because we've been waiting this game so long ever since we got the internet on a computer with net zero connection and it's finally here so you know y'all can say well pop Shamu it's overrated too like I said about the Final Fantasy 7 but you gotta understand this is long overdue you know what I'm saying but hey it is what it is I know I'm forgetting a lot of games for uh, Sony, but um, it's crazy in the hood. But yeah, we're going to go to Nintendo. Besides the Nintendo World Championships and the Smash Brothers DLC, which they should have showed it at their conference instead of Sunday, in my opinion. Nintendo's conference was awful. It was underwhelming. I, I didn't I didn't get no no chills from it like I did with Sony. Oh yeah. I forgot. Hitman. That one surprised me too. The new Hitman game. And Square Enix is developing that game. Freaking Hitman. That's pretty good. I haven't seen Hitman in a long time. I like, since Blood Money. I know Absolution is on the uh, 360, but um, but yeah, I haven't seen Hitman in a long time. But yeah, back to Nintendo. That was terrible. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna call it, except for the Star Fox thing. But I don't like how Fox McCloud looked like Ted. You know how he in the face. I don't like the design, but. I'm I'm happy for the Star Fox. It, it, it's getting its job done. It's coming out. I mean, I wanted to see F Zero, a new F Zero, a new Metroid. I'm not talking about that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Metroid Federation Forces, whatever that is. That's not Metroid. Okay, that is unacceptable. That's not what we want to see. Okay. Mario Maker, you showed that last year. Um, and I also wanted to see gameplay 
and I probably missed this part. They probably showed it something else of Devil's Third, which it kind of reminds me, and I was very interested in it when I saw the trailer last year. But I heard some things about the game that they did a 180 on it. And what I mean by 180 on it is they changed the gameplay and all that. Because when I saw it at first, it had, you know, swords, guns. It kind of reminds me of the original Wii game, uh, Red Steel. And so I, I, was getting, I was getting into that and what that's all about. But I, I need to check it again and see if it has it on YouTube. So I'm just, most of the stuff I missed was Square Enix, Microsoft, and uh, PC games. But yeah, uh, it's crazy in the hood, man. You know, Nintendo, even Iwata said it was it was underwhelming. We didn't bring it our, our best. You know what I'm saying? They ain't really had no games like that. You know what I mean? That Zelda uh, looks cool. That four, uh, The Toon Link uh, ones, it looks cool. But not really a fan of it. I liked it Wind Waker, but I never played the other ones. With the two links, um, I can't even remember what Nintendo did. To be honest with you, it was that underwhelming. Uh, like I said, I'm just I'm just thinking at the top of my head. I'm probably gonna talk about this again with my buddies on the call about E3. Like I said, this is the gaming aspect. This is the games, the games itself. Okay. Microsoft. Tomb Raider, which is time exclusive. I think it's time exclusive. I stand corrected. Forms of Motorsport 6. Halo 5, which I showed that to E3s ago. Uh, uh, the Division. That looks interesting. And Gears of War 4. That's the only thing that got me pumped up. I didn't care about the Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Um, and I took points off because at first, you're going to give people the beta code of the Xbox One preview members, but it didn't work. Okay? And you had to get another beta code for it to work. You didn't tell that part, Microsoft. But yeah, Gears of War 4. I can't wait for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man. What 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 else? What else? What else? Some wall E looking game, some robotic game called uh Recore or something like that. It looks cool. It, it looks alright. Uh, what else? 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 Mass Effect 4. That looks good. You know. Most, most of the games that Microsoft showed, most of them were shooters. Most of them were shooters. No adventure games. No fighting games. You know, no beat-em-ups. It was just mostly shooters. And... You know, it was no variety in terms of games, really. And the most things that they showed, they showed it last year. Some for Sony, too. And some for Nintendo. But, you know... That's why I say, when it comes down to games... Sony won. But let's check out the overall... E3. Let's check out. I'm going to do a review of the overall E3. The presentation and how it's executed. I say Bethesda one because they gave you haymaker after haymaker of games. Talk is cheap. Let's just show them the games. Stop the lyrics. Stop the, all the politics. Just show the games. Bethesda did good. Okay. They did good. Square Enix did good. Um... Like I said, Microsoft, I got a bone to pick with Microsoft. You expect me to pay $150 for a controller with, with great precision or whatever it is, whatever it is that's good for 
racing games and shooters and and all that the xbox elite wireless controller that's a fight stick i buy two of those that's a that that's almost the price of the xbox one itself i'm not paying 149 dollars for a small controller like that nah Fight stick, maybe. Even fight sticks is kind of steep. I would rather for it to be like $80 or something. But, which I did get it for 80, get some fight sticks for 80 bucks. But that's just ridiculous right there. And the only thing Microsoft got from, got uh, a one-up a one on Sony is the backwards uh, compatibility. In a way, this could backfire. Because Xbox 360 did the same thing with the original Xbox games. And all the games wasn't backwards compatibility. Which I think is going to be the same way with the Xbox One playing Xbox 360 games. And they added 18 games from the start. And and they have a poll where you can vote games that should be on that should be playable on the Xbox One. Uh, the, the, the 360 games. But games like... That's already on the one, but it's also coming out on 360. It's not gonna be available like Madden 16 or, you know, other games. You know, it's gonna be older games back in 2005 through 2010. I guarantee it. But um, I do want that for the PlayStation 4 to play PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 games. But they got that PlayStation Now service, which they're selling it all over again. And, you know, Microsoft, the idea of it is cool. It's really, really cool. That's the only one up, you know, they got from Sony. Nintendo, they have backwards capability. You can play your Wii games, your original Wii games. I wish they can play GameCube games. But there's a way to do that. Sony presentation was flashy I'm not gonna lie they was really showing off they was really showing off with their games but you you cannot lie though it, it was it was it moved you in some of the games that they showed um they should have showed Kingdom Hearts 2 gameplay even though that was Square Enix you know conference but it should have still showed it in the uh, in the uh conference I guess they hadn't enough time so that's why they let Square Enix do their thing it showed their games that it was going for. Oh yeah, I didn't see no Persona 5 gameplay. That's the minus 15 points. Okay, Sony. No Persona 5. Uh, they probably they probably did upload a Persona 5, but it was at later at the conference of E3 because there's some games that they're supposed to show in the conference of each companies, but it had like. I guess the leftover time that they had, like the next day, like on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and you know, and today probably. But um, yeah, it was all flash, you know. But deep down, when it really boils down to it, the gamers, the consumers win because all the games that you would like to play in the future is all in your hands. And in a way, the consumer is the boss because the consumer buys your product and you make money off of that product that you're selling, the person that's selling it. So, the gamers won E3. In, 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 in an entitlement way, it's true. But it's, you know, the whole overall E3 presentation, the gamers won. Because I, I feel that the gamers, including myself, and, and I'm talking about the gamers that was there at E3 in Los Angeles or whatever, uh, was satisfied of what they wanted in their game systems. Like I said, I'm a gamer. I'm going to have all systems in the next day. All the next gen. But it's going to be for my dad. But I would get an Xbox One on my own, though. But, uh... Yeah. Or we'll share that one. Because, cause, to be honest, I don't see the point of me 
you know, playing on the Xbox One like that. Especially I hear in that Killer Instinct and Gears of War Ultimate Edition will be on PC and they're going to have Windows 10 integrated into the Xbox One. I don't see the point of me getting the Xbox One. I don't see the point. And I knew Killer Instinct was going to come out on PC. I freaking knew it. Like, I just don't see the point. My PC that I just made... Is, is my Xbox One. Pretty much. Because I'm planning on getting Windows 10. But yeah. Uh, I know there was a lot of games I forgot. It, it was just, it was so many. So many to choose from. I wish I had a list. I, I would, it, this review would have been better. But uh, I might do another one. With other people's opinions. About E3, but um, yeah, it was a it was a interesting E3. The weakest link was Nintendo. I'm sorry, my apologies on that. That that was that was unacceptable. Nintendo did not bring it this year. That was unacceptable. But Sony and Microsoft, it was sort of a tie. As overall presentation, but Bethesda got it though. But the overall E3, who won this battle, is us gamers. Don't ever forget that. Stay tuned for more videos. I am so bad, man. How can I forget Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain? I just, I seriously slept myself. Excellent as well. I can't wait to play that. And Batman Arkham Knight. Loving it.